folk cult pendulum at the South Pole. So we said, oh, they've done the folk cult pendulum at the South Pole, and it and it you know rotates in a day. You're like, wow, that's pretty crazy. It's a incredible experiment and test. Can we go find the um, details about it? Well, we can, and I did. And so let me show you what we had there over at the South Pole, what they did and how uh, detailed they were in their activities and everything that they did to prove it. So we're going to, I lost it now. I just thought, here we go. Nope, not that one either. Nope. Where did you go? Here we go. It's called the beer can. The beer can, not what you're thinking. Something else. Let's transition over here for you. So reading about this, this is the beer can. It's outside of the South Pole. It is the vertical tower in the official USAP parlance. It's how we move between the comfortable living zone and our critical infrastructure for storage. There you see the can sitting next to the building. This is the inside of the digs there at the uh, ceremonial, if you will, South Pole, or what they call the South Pole. Here's a storage house. Here's some storage pipes. Here's the generator. Here's a building. Here's the ground floor. Here's the temperature. And then this is looking from the top of the stairwell down to the ground. Okay. Uh, it says, descending the stairs, you'll encounter what was ground level from the beer can was originally built. Here is a door. He opened the door. Okay, great. It just shows outside. So this is, believe it or not, where they did the very you know expensive experiment. I mean, just so much detail in these guys of science. This is where they did it. it was uh, they hung a board with a wire from a rafter, and you know I had a feeling that I wasn't going to. This is a different page on. Let me check one thing here. I want to get you the story about the actual uh, test, but uh, I got to check one thing. Why didn't that come up here? Let's go here. That's good there. Where are we at here? So it's this one. No. Uh, no. No. And again, you know, we've all talked about this before, but remember that Einstein knew about Foucault's pendulum and he knew that that wasn't proof that the earth moves or else he would have used it. But uh, he obviously is the one, him and... Um, Others who all decided, you know, Lorenz uh, and Sanyak, all these guys came up with different ways of explaining it away. But uh, I don't see physics in your world detail on page. Let me try one other thing. Let's see here, wait. This resource is the physics to go. Feature from February until February. View the feature here. Did we just do that? Okay. This was not it. If I think if I check images real quick, I might be able to see some I recognize. Yeah, these guys. All right, there we go. So, first of all, this is them talking about, remember, again, these are scientists. They don't lie. They don't have any reason to lie. You lie. You're liars. You guys are grifters, but not, these guys are on top of things. Um, and it talks about the abstract, a full cult's pendulum at the South Pole was determined to have a period of 24 hours plus or minus 50 minutes. The acceleration due to gravity was determined to be 9.85 meters per second. Uh, the rotation of the Earth was in a clockwise direction if looking down on the South Pole. Foucault's pendulum appears to rotate in time with respect to the floor swinging above. However, because of the way it's suspended, it will not twist, so any rotating is being done by the floor, and the floor is attached to the earth, so it is the rotation of the earth that is being observed. Even though the item that is suspended from a rope from the ceiling of a building is also supposedly turning. Make sense? The pendulum will travel in a circle relative to the floor at a distance of blankety blankety blank, blah, 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 okay? Construction, the South Pole is an excellent place <laughs> to build a full cult pendulum and observe the rotation of the Earth. Its environment poses a number of unique challenges. When this pendulum was made, the temperature was 90 degrees Fahrenheit and the physio altitude was greater than 11,000 feet. It was decided to build the pendulum in a stairwell of the new station that was under construction, out of the way of traffic, out of the wind and ice and other elements. Also, the enclosed stairwell is six stories high and that would allow for a long pendulum. Longer pendulum arm will have a greater angular momentum less air resistance, and the amplitude of its arc will decay more slowly. Construction on the Foucault's pendulum began by measuring out a length of 33 meters in length. Guys, how far is 33 meters? I'm pretty sure that's over 100 feet. We just learned by somebody else at the South Pole Station that that hallway or that stairwell is 50 feet. And it gets said less than 50 feet. A hole was drilled through a length of 2 by 4 through which the pendulum is pendulum's wire was fixed in such a way that would have the freedom of movement in all directions. Now, don't tell us how that happened. Just say 
Yeah, they fixed the cable so it could move in all directions. How did they do that? Scientists did it. Uh, the two by four was fixed to the top of the stairwell and the wire suspended down into the stairwell. At the bottom of the stairwell, a 25 kilogram weight was suspended from the wire approximately five centimeters off the floor. After waiting for the weight to stop spinning and come to a rest, the full cause pendulum was ready to operate. All right, we're ready to go. Let's see how they do it. The weight of the pendulum was released from an angle and the pendulum was started. Great, here we go. At the apex of the arc, a mark was made corresponding to the floor mark, point at the bottom of the bob every 20 minutes for 24 hours. There was no mechanism for keeping the pendulum swinging, and the amplitude decayed within a couple of hours, so it hardly, so it had to be restarted periodically over the 24-hour period. So now they're restarting the pendulum. After saying up here, the pendulum was determined to have a period of 24 hours. Well, we had to restart it all the time. Okay, great. Um, that's good. Uh, let's see here, restart periodically. If a, if the period of the pendulum was 24 hours, then it should subend, subtend an angle of 15 degrees every hour. Intermediate measurements and calculations were made to verify this. By measuring the lengths of the three sides of the equilater, equilateral triangle formed by the swinging pendulum over a 20-minute period, and then using the law of cosines to calculate the angle subtended in that time period, it was determined that the Earth rotated in a clockwise direction relative to looking down at the South Pole. Five degrees every 20 minutes as expected. Oh, as expected, right. But by timing the period of arc made by swinging pendulum and using the equation, whatever, a value for the acceleration of gravity was calculated. Calculated. Hmm? Uh, T was measured to be 11.5 seconds. L was measured to be 33 meters. Again, 33 meters is not the correct height. The building is only 50 feet, not 100 feet. Uh, so G was calculated to be 9.85 meters per second squared. Since the pendulum's period is independent of the weight of the bob, the experiment was performed with a variety of weights until one was found that gave consistent results. Can you believe this? What? Since the pendulum's period is independent of the weight of the bob, so it doesn't matter the weight of the bob, the pendulum should do the same thing. So the experiment was performed with a variety of weights until one was found that gave the right results. This is how science is done, ladies and gentlemen. Look at McToon. Look at these jokers who will tell you Everything that we've ever seen too far isn't too far. It's because of refraction. How do they know? They go to Walter Bisland's calculator and they turn the dial until the item that you're looking for pops up over the horizon. And then they say, that's the amount of refraction. How could you argue that? How could you argue that science? All we have to do is if we see something too far, it can never be anything. It can't mean that the earth's flat. It's got to mean that the earth's a sphere and we just got to figure out how much refraction is there. And then we just move the dial until the item appears and then it's there. That's refraction. I mean, that's pretty brilliant if you ask me. Uh, standing on the bottom of the world, the Earth spins backwards relative to the direction it spins in the northern hemisphere. However, water still spins down the drain in the same direction. Oh, thank you for throwing that there. Our first attempt with the pendulum showed the Earth spinning backwards from what was expected. Oh, <laughs> okay. <Yeah. laughs> we didn't notice this at first because we're all from the northern hemisphere and are accustomed to the Earth spinning in an anti-clockwise direction. We then realized that our frame of reference, the Earth, should be spinning clockwise, so we had to modify the pendulum. What? This is the big folk called pendulum experiment. Oh, we modified it because it was spinning the wrong direction. Oh, you just modified it. Yeah, we just we kind of moved the weight this way a little bit, and then we spun it this way a little bit, and then it started working. And we only had to get 20 minutes. We just had to make it show one time. We needed consistent results. So we waited until we got a weight that was consistent, and we waited until we got a spin that was consistent, and then we go ahead and write this paper and say at the top of it, a folk called pendulum at the South Pole was determined to have a period of 24 hours plus or minus 50 minutes. Also, we had to change the weight 15 times until we got one that actually worked. We needed consistent results. We weren't getting those. We've lied about the height of the of the location. It's actually only 50 feet, not 100 feet. But all these things, don't worry about it. The folk called pendulum definitely proves we are on a ball uh, for sure, right? For sure. I don't see how anybody can argue that. It would be futile to argue it. Um... Let's see where we're at here. Let's go a little bit more. Where are we at here? The opening picture shows us three kneeling next to the pendulum with the weight hanging in a vertical configuration. The air resistance against this weight caused the pendulum itself to rotate. This gave us spurious, spurious results. Hmm. It caused the pendulum itself to rotate? I thought that's what it was supposed to do. You said that you designed it in a way that it was free to rotate. Then it rotated and they said, no, 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 no. We don't expect this. We don't expect this. Come on, this is wrong. Our second attempt showed that the Earth rotating in the proper direction, but an angular velocity twice of what is expected. No, now we got, now the Earth's spinning in 12 hours. So we suspected that some kind of government conspiracy, but decided to make a further modification and try again. Let's change the weight again. This is not how you do science, guys. You cannot just keep doing it until you get what you want. 
That's not science. Our last attempt showed that the Earth spins on its axis every 24 hours. <laughs> we were somewhat disappointed we didn't uncover a government cover-up. Sure. Uh, stinking cold, and we had to walk up five, five flights of stairs. Right, five flights of stairs uh, is not 100 feet. Should have known that. Uh, we have demonstrated a physical phenomenon confirming that we are on the axis of the rotation of the Earth, although the result matches our hypothesis and nothing new has been discovered. You tried it 15 times till you got it to work. Uh, we have placed ourselves among the stars and standing besides Galileo in recognition of our planet as a rotating sphere floating in the heavens. Uh, we have thus enacted, or I'm sorry, enhanced our own understanding of our place in the universe. The South Pole folk called Pendulum is still in place and periodically one of us will go down and start it swinging and take further data to refine our findings. This last sentence here, horseshit. Horseshit. Was never there. Never they went back there and did it again. It's, I don't know who in the hell would believe that. Uh, not me. Not me. Um, I mean, again, everything that they're talking about here is all the problems. You know, it was difficult to make the pendulum swing in a plane rather than an ellipse. After several attempts with various techniques of holding the bob, dropping it, we always got some kind of ellipse instead of a plane. This adds to our error because it's more difficult to locate the mark of the pendulum's apex. A way to do it is suspending the bob and then tying it with a piece of string and then letting it settle. Then to burn through the string, right? The bob would then drop without any outside force and swing in a plane. Since it's against the Antarctic Treaty to have open flames, can you imagine if I was there with these guys and I was like, okay, this idea we're going to do with the flame, and the guy's like, we, oh, we can't use an open flame. We're just going to use a lighter. We're just going to use a lighter to burn that string. Mm, we can't do that, sir. What? What kind of pussy are you? What do you mean? We're going to use a lighter. It's not, we're not going to hurt anything. No, no, we can't do it. Um, Cause they, this was their idea, but then they said, no, we couldn't do this. After much practice, Mike town got very adept at dropping the Bob so that it arced in a plane. <laughs> I mean, now I'm sold. I, you know, I was a little bit doubtful about the shape of the earth, but now that these guys have done this very, very you know, meticulous job at the South. I mean, look at this, look at this, this is how you hang a bob from above, and they're not even close to the top, so we're probably talking 40 feet if the entire can is 50 feet, and these guys are this place probably able to stand on that scaffolding. Now, how are you going to hang a rope from here that allows the item to swing in any direction? It, it, all, these things are so great for me, because what they really do is they show me that this is what science is to these people. That They're told to go get a certain result. Not like, go test and see what the, you know, then they would come back and say, the earth is spinning 12 hours a day, or in 12 hours. No, no, no. So they just keep going until they, and by the way, I mean, who, who didn't notice already, you know, it's 33 meters. Not 34, not 32, 33, okay? Don't you ever forget it. And, uh, you know, you got the uh, calculated 9.8 meters. I mean, everything that you could ever want came out of this experiment, really Good stuff. So any, any time, next time somebody says, well, the folk calls pendulum, say, oh, of course. Well, we already seen it. We've seen everything that they've done in the South. It's uh, basically the best science ever done. Uh, Dave McKeegan would back it for sure. Uh, so, yeah, there you go. This Oh, here's a good picture. of. Oh, I can't click it. So eventually they did realize you got to turn the weight this way. So at least they knew what they were doing because, I mean, the other one, <laughs> how would you ever think it would be okay to hang it as a disc upright in the vertical fashion? That would be uh, retardation. All right, that was fun. Enjoyable. All right, should we get on with the show? We shall. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Journalism Show. I know it's on a weird night. I know it's at a weird time. You'll get over it. It is the opposite of mainstream. You're going to learn that pretty quick as we go through 100 items that I loathe 